Hey guys, Kit here. Uh, broke up the card of the day review into two parts, just so the videos wouldn't be too crazy long each. Um, so we're, I guess we're here on the next week of cards. Um, Vanilla TD, 3k counter. Uh, it's going to be in the Chris Waifu deck probably. <laughs> Outside of that, nothing too spectacular. Next card we have a generic uh, 1065 if you have a full field. Uh, 500 power for every other lab member on the field. Um, it's going to be an okay card and might be played, I guess. And it's just like a good alternative for uh, a little bit overstated character card uh, in combination with like 2k and 2.5 counters. So it might get played, might not. It just seems like a generically okay card. Uh, next one here is this level 0 uncommon. It's, uh, this card goes from field to waiting room. You can pay cost, which is pay 1 to discard a climax from hand if you do. Uh, pick a climax from your waiting room and add it to your hand. Uh, I foresee this card being used somewhat. I'm not sure how many would be very good in deck. Maybe one to two would be enough. Uh, but if you're trying to set up uh, your level one game, this will basically guarantee getting the climax into your hand as long as you have a climax to ditch. So uh, all the cost being one climax and it having to die or go from field to waiting room is kind of annoying. So maybe this will be like a one of in most decks. But I think. Um, Effects like this, where you can guarantee climax combos and stuff like this, uh, is very can be very very powerful. Uh, usually, that's why you see like cards like that that have make consistent uh, make the climax consistency go up. Usually, get banned uh, fairly quickly or like restricted whenever a set is considered too powerful. Next, we have what's one one Daru. It's a level support for cards in front of it, and it has a pay to tap um, salvage a character. Now, unlike the other one we saw. Uh, the other one, one support. This one could actually be played in more uh, standby set uh, list, I think, because just being able to bring out an early uh, level support is strong, but also having the effect of pay to tap salvage any character from your waiting room and adds, or not any character, any lab member trade character to your hand is also really strong, though it might not really get played. Uh, but this is just like a really solid option as far as. Um, level supports go in standby builds I guess. Uh, next this is an interesting card too. This is like something that you could possibly see in standby. Uh, it comes with the gold bar that's right below it. So um, what makes this interesting with standby is the effect of the card is something somewhat new that people have not seen before. So um, it gains 500 power for every other lab, ma uh, lab member trait character so it gains usually a 2k power bump which makes it uh, 9.5 which is already pretty solid it's 2 soul which is even better and then this is if you have the level 3 um, early play uh, Suzuha in your level zone or yeah level zone this gains an additional 2500 power so you're looking at a 12k 2 to 12k beater with 2 soul which is makes it very hard for people to get over uh, and to reverse, which is very solid. And it has an interesting climax combo, which is when the battle opponent of this gets reversed, if you have the gold bar out in play, uh, you can pay one uh, and then you reveal the top. Or... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is not the one I was thinking of. But then uh, you pay one and you search for two lab, uh, lab member trait characters from your deck and add it to hand and shuffle. So this is an interesting effect as well. I think this could be a really solid contender for um, a second combo in standby. Instead of running um, the extra soul, I mean extra stock Suzuha, this could be an option because just of how big it gets is really scary. And on top of having like a 2,500 power counter, you're looking at a 14.5 before ba uh, before supports um, to beat this outright, and the combo is pretty solid. The only downside is, you know, if you whiff standby and stuff like that, it makes it a lot harder to play this card, as well as the fact that um, the combo itself requires you to pay one, which means you're going to burn through a lot of stock, but at least you get that uh, immediate compression, I guess, by pulling two characters out of your deck, making it like two less potential damage you be, can be taking. So I'm not sure where this is going to land up, but I mean, I could see this being played at some point, especially since uh, Gold Bar is a really solid uh, trigger to have in your deck since it facilitates um, uh, better tempo advantages since the climaxes are going to your hand whenever you trigger them. So the following turn, you're able to basically slam a climax almost every time after you trigger Gold Bar. All right, next here in the TD, we have the 3-2 Chris. It's generic killer, basically, and then on... Play uh, once card attacks. If you have four more other 
uh, lab trait characters then or lab member trait characters you can give one of your characters a thousand power and one soul uh, I like cards like this that have a uh, soul manipulation and power manipulation I think is really solid and you can always like just not choose to give something one soul and 1000 power if need be you just give it to the back row or something like that or give it to itself if you need a side for one with a climax it's a very could be a very powerful card uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this in some amount of decks especially like anyone that's going for the whole Chris waifu type of deck uh, but um, could be powerful could not be just okay card overall it might be choice healer in the end not really sure uh, here we got this 1-0 uh, Ferris. Uh, when this card goes from hand to field, you can pick a lab trait character and give it 1500 power, which is, I th yeah, and it could pick itself if need be, so it could be 4k. Wow, this is a double R. That's kind of weird, but I guess the power pump uh, is pretty good. So uh, I really like this card, but it's a level 1 suicider, so it reverses level 1s and lowers when this card gets reversed. Um, seems like an okay card, especially if you're looking for uh, utility while being able to kill something. So uh, you can see effects like this where you play it, give something 1500 power, run it in, it dies, you kill the thing, and then you trigger standby on another attack and you can play over it, which doesn't feel doesn't feel as bad, I guess. But um, kind of, I don't know if I like this as a double R. That's yeah, but um, power pump and being able to reverse, and if you're playing red, it just seems like a solid card overall. Uh, next, we have this 2 1 counter. When you use this backup, if you have a lab member trait character, uh, so it's a 3 5 backup counter with like basically no condition. Um, can see this being played, but the set already has a lot of really good counter cards that are costless and even runs or even has a basically Sayaka's Wish um, card effect so I don't know if this will be really played but I mean the deck itself is already trying to force a uh, field based countering game plan from what I feel like so this could be easily be played um, yeah nothing too special just overstated counter uh, one zero free fresh counter or not counter but a event so both players refresh so this card it can absolutely be very devastating if the right cards are uh, there's two versions here so if the right cards are effects are in the set so if the set gets some kind of stock shuffler or something like that stop um, what is it uh, yeah stock replacement or whatever causing your opponent to uh, mill all, all their stock and then replace it with uh, random cards from their deck basically and then you force a uh, free uh, refresh right then Two, you can just uh, just just destroy your opponent really bad because now you're like shuffling if they if they're at all compressed at all or have like a good amount of stock. So say um, going into level three, they have nine stock, nine to ten stock. You uh, cause them to uh, send all that stock to waiting room and then replace it from their deck. Uh, so you potentially you put ten cards in waiting room that are usually good players will keep their stock very clean so there's like 10 free damage going into their waiting room and then 10 random cards from their deck going into stock so you could snipe a couple climaxes that way and then force a refresh causing them to have a very uh, uncompressed deck so instead of uh, having to deal with a deck that's like one in three or one in four now you're swinging into a deck that's like one in five or, or one in six making like really big powerful swings and like double strike effects being very very powerful so um, if something like that happens in combination with this card you could see Mayuri trial deck uh, double striker being a very good choice in game uh, so, uh, also in the fact that uh, there is the 2 1 Psycho Wish counter in this set, making that level 3 a uh, really good optimal choice for reversing. And it's also a climax list combo, uh, which is even better. So I could foresee that being something very powerful this set could uh, produce if it has um, the stock uh, replacement effect in this set. But uh, as of right now, I don't think they've revealed anything like that. Maybe tonight they will. Uh, TD card on play the card gains 1500 power so it's a 4k beater okay card if need be it's like uh, okay beater at zero nothing special basically uh, let's see here uh, this is level zero if you have two or more other lab member trade characters it gains 1k so it's a 3k beater if you just have like two back row and then on play pay one ditch one search for a lab, a lab member trade character add a tan and then shuffle so it's in like a little bit of a power creeped uh, uh, what is it? Um, 
pay one ditch one searcher. Uh, seems like an okay card. I could see it in some decks, and at the same time, not even never be played. Uh, just okay utility card. Here we have a two one. If you have four more uh, lab member trait characters, this gets minus one level in hand. Then on the field, it gains one k for every other uh, lab member trait. So it, usually it's going to be extra four thousand power. So it's going to be a two one eight five. Uh, Suzaha at level one, uh, okay card, nothing amazing. Usually cards like this, uh, you don't really play cards like this that often, just because of the fact that um, there's no way to really protect this card. Oh, I just now noticed this has two soul. So two one eight five two soul beater. Yeah, this card that changes everything about how I like evaluated this card originally. So uh, this could be a really strong uh, card choice in a standby list just because it's a uh, overstat at 85 it can't be reversed by reversers that are cost zero or level one because it's a level two uh, some matchups will be bad in what like gochi usa and crayon shin chan are the ones that have level one counters that kill higher level i think log horizon might have one of those two or something i don't really remember but eight five and you're already probably if you're running green you're probably running the two five counter and worst case you have a 2k counter so you're at 10 five now with the counter that's really big and really hard for your opponent to beat and the fact that it comes in early at level one or you can get uh you know push it in with uh standby as well at level one is pretty solid actually um i'm not sure if this card will really get played because usually overstated cards like this uh, you need some way to really protect them, but it's it's hard to like really tell what's going on with this set because you have a lot of counters. So it really depends if uh, if there's nothing in the meta. I think that really hurts playing like level two to level one as well as there's not a lot of wind triggers going on. Uh, this could be a really really solid card, and you don't feel as bad too if you have to hard play it because it only costs one stock. So yeah. Two soul, two soul beater tempo might be really, really good. Uh, just being able to get that extra soul out whenever you want, especially in standby, since usually you're uh, not your. Whenever you play a standby climax, you're not really getting any extra tempo out of it. If uh, you know, if they, um, if your climax doesn't give you any soul, that is. All right, we have these two two events. Um, you do not have a lab trait, a lab member trait character, you cannot play this. Put this card in memory. Uh, so the, put the top two cards of your deck to stock, and then one of your characters gains 2,000 power. And then if you have two or more of these in memory, you draw two, ditch one. If you have three or more in the memory, uh, pick one of your opponent's back row, cost one or lower characters, and send it to the waiting room. And then if you have four more in memory, um, two characters from your clock, add it to hand, and then discard a card. So at four in memory, they it becomes a heal two plus one, or yeah, basically hand filter or whatever. So you're gonna be ditching one as well. Um, this card could be okay. Uh, they've been printing a lot of weird effects like this lately on uh, event cards, especially on two twos. So this card could be okay if you have effects that can force this into memory. Um, but I doubt that effect's going to be printed. But this could be really fun in like some meme decks, which uh, I will definitely be building a few of those just for fun on uh, at uh, shop tournaments and stuff. Uh, but I don't think this is really going to be played in the meta deck. So next here we have the Shimikaze combo from the trial deck. So this this could be a good option, uh, optional choice for the your level one game plan if you want it in yellow and a way to search. So Climax Combos with Wind Trigger, I think right now Wind Trigger is a pretty strong uh, trigger to have as far as building tempo. I think a lot of the sets right now are really relying on early plays and things that cost a lot of stock, but being able to cheat them out early, like Hina Logic and stuff like that. Uh, so Wind Trigger I think is an okay trigger, but uh, besides that, um, this is a pretty generic combo. Just 6k with the Climax, if it reverses Battle Opponent, you search your deck for a lab member character. So. Uh, this was already spoiled before, but we'll go ahead and go over it. Um, during your turn, if all your characters are basically characters, this card gains 2,000 power, so usually on attack it's going to be 11-5 before supports. On play, you look at top 3, add one card to hand, discard the rest, and then climax combo with the gate. Uh, pay On attack, pay 2, ditch 1. 
Um, if you have the gate combo, you can pay cost. If you do, your opponent takes X damage, and for the turn, the card gains 1,000 power. Uh, X is where the number of level 3 or higher characters. Uh, you're level 3 or higher characters. So it counts itself as well. Um, one bad thing about this card is that uh, my Yuri support and standby kind of like negatively impact this card. So you're going to have the support in the back row and then say like three level threes in the front row because there is a Mayuri uh, level three support that's like the, I believe like the Asuna support from Sora Online. So uh, you'll be attacking with this and so it's a pay two ditch one burn four. Uh, four is not a very strong number to be sweet, or do extra burns on. I feel like three is like the sweet spot you really want to be at. Especially since this combos with uh, gate, so you'd be like three three on every attack. So uh, three of these and no level three back row makes this uh, swing for uh, like three 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 three. If you have uh, three uh, Chris level threes, uh, what's really good about this combo or this level three two is that when it comes into play, it helps you dig for your combo or dig for extra level three Chris. So uh, this might become one of the bigger in game finishers or whatever that people are going to be playing. Uh, it's because it also combos with gate and gate is a very popular trigger and very strong trigger that a lot of Japanese players and English players alike just you know will force gate even if it's blank uh, in the deck just because of how good the trigger is and of course there's uh, two different arts for it here we have a 2-1 event it's salvage 2 ditch 1 uh, okay event solid um, might be played might not don't don't really know so and there's a second art for it and then there is the gate it's very cute <laughs> next we have the trial deck Mayuri um, on play reveal the top card of your deck if it's a lab member trait character or a metal upa uh, add it to hand and discard one and then when this card attacks give another character 1500 power uh, this card is pretty powerful so it's a hand filter card and on attack gives something 1500 making it so like your level zero game doesn't necessarily have to have like really big beaters if you have like one of this card to swing into empty spots and then buff up like a two five power card now you can beat over three fives since it's a 4k uh, i can see this card being used uh, occasionally in builds um, solid card all around and then we have this event card in the trial deck i found this very interesting i don't remember i think they printed uh, an effect like this before but i'm not very sure so it's a 1-1 event counter. Um, if you don't have a lab member trait character, you can't play this from hand. Uh, give one of your characters the effect that it cannot be reversed uh, for the turn. So this is really, really good in a lot of ways. So you're, like, you're paying one to deny your opponent a plus if they have to reverse. And it also helps late game as well. So you pay one to stop them from reversing like a level three or whatever. And what happens is now any of their reverse combos cannot go off, so like clock kicks and things like that. Uh, it's just a really powerful effect. I just don't know how this event is going to affect the deck builds or anything like that, or if, even if it'll be used. Uh, but it is a very cute card, so I might try it out anyway, especially if I'm going to be playing with some blue. Good stock out, I guess, as well. And then actually, you can actually, <laughs> this sounds really stupid, but you can actually play it main phase too, uh, on yourself too. And then uh, during your main phase of your character, you can front attack like a level three or the level zero and it won't die or something stupid like that. Though I don't know if that will ever be something someone would do. It's just just the thought uh, of a way to use that card. Uh, next here, a level one climax combo. Uh, so, what is this? So you can shuffle in. On, okay, so when this card attacks, you can pay cost, which is you shuffle in two characters or metal Oompa characters from your waiting room to your deck. And the card gains 2,000 power, so it's a 1065 if you shuffle stuff in. And then it has a climax combo with this plus two soul. Um, when this card attacks, if this is in the front row, you, uh, you can give an attacking character minus one soul. If you do, then it gains 2k power. Um... Yeah, it seems like a really bad card. <laughs> uh, soul manipulation is pretty good. Um, 4K power up is seems okay, so it's a 1085, so you can beat over big walls and stuff like that. Unfortunately, you end up shuffling in cards into your deck that just to get the extra 2K power, you shuffle cards back into your deck that are not very powerful. 
at all. Um, I could see this in combination with uh, there's level three we'll be looking at later that's on attack. I think it's pay two, ditch one, reveal the top card of your deck, and you burn for the level of that card. So maybe this card can be put in decks as like little situations where you have very minimal cards in your deck, you shuffle them back like two level threes, and then you top check with that effect to burn. Uh, but the climax nice combo seems really crappy outside of like being able to have somewhat soul manipulation so instead of attacking for three you could attack for two uh yeah but generally climax combos that don't give you pluses suck so yeah next here we have some more td cards on play oh this card's broken man right here this okabe is on play if your opponent has the same okabe uh both players say uh was it l uh sai kangaroo to each other <laughs> Uh, this card's absolutely broken. Look at this power creep. 5-5 five, five vanilla with an effect. No demerit. Broken. And it's a, uh, it's uh, apples. So this is a bonds to this vanilla. And then gives it also 1k. So it's a 1065 apples all over again. This is a broken version of apples since it gets this extra effect. Alright. Uh, we have this level 0 Ruka. Let's see. On play. Look at the top card of your deck. Leave it there. Put it on the... Uh, bottom of your deck. The second effect is whenever this card you send this card back to your hand. Uh, so when a climax is in the climax zone, bounces back to your hand, and then give a character 1k till the end of your opponent's turn. So this is another really good card um, that just uh, what is it called highlights more to the fact that this deck is going to be 100. I think it's going to be 100% uh, a field based power deck. So uh, this combo is very well standby, obviously, and it gives extra power to things, uh, which is pretty important when you're trying to get over certain things. And then it, it gives the 1k power uh, cross turn, so it makes it even harder for your opponent to reverse your characters. Um, honestly, with how many cards they've been revealing that generate or uh, revolve around having some type of uh, very powerful field, I can't imagine this card not being played if you're playing standby. Uh, it's probably one of the few good cards you could be playing actually with standby. I think cards with this effect here yeah, is, is I don't want to say broken, but it's very, very powerful. Deck manipulation like this where you top check and you, you see like a climax and you either move it to the bottom because um, you're going to be playing this almost every turn. Um, so you move it to the bottom and memorize where it's at and then you can slowly build up uh, certain cancels and stuff like that. Or you can see the climax on top or something like that and then brainstorm. Uh, and get a plus one off of it. Uh, what's really strong about this too is basically running this card makes it so your brainstorm is always going to be uh, like a five card brainstorm for the most part. Uh, I think that's very powerful. And in combination with uh, that level three I was talking about earlier too, this card uh, could be very, very a very powerful rare card in the set. I don't ima I can't imagine this card not being played like for the most part. Just I just really love the top check and bottom deck manipulation. I think that's one of the most powerful effects. You can have uh, as a very good player in Weiss because being able to memorize card orders uh, on the bottom of your deck is really powerful. It's the reason why uh, Love Life Sunshine is so powerful, not just because of the not, not just because of the tempo advantage you gain from the extra tax that you get from the Yo level three and the fact that there you get a, a double uh, level three at a three stock cost, which is pretty insane in itself. Uh, you get a lot of uh, very strong deck manipulation if you play the 1-0 Mari and the level 0 uh, back row that saves things so you can top check move things to the bottom. There's a lot of times where you'll just move multiple climax to the bottom, uh, use the 1-0 Ruby effect to mill your Azu Azusa effect to mill your deck down to that point, attack three times, and then your deck is like five cards with three climaxes left. Uh, your opponent is definitely not going to get any damage through then. So I just really, I'm, I'm really, I, I'm, if you haven't noticed, I'm very biased towards the standby for this set because I think it's going to be really powerful. Uh, and this card just kind of makes it uh, that much more sweeter. Uh, here is another rare. Uh, during an opponent's turn, all your characters gain 500 power. So, or all your lab member trait characters gain 500 power. Once again, another uh, defensive power buff, which is uh, very solid. And then we have a spammable brainstorm, which I haven't seen in quite a while. It's a pay one mill top 40 waiting room for every climax. You may search your deck for a lab member trait character, add it to hand, and then discard a card. Um, seems like an okay trait, or uh, okay card to have. I don't know if this is really going to be used. Uh, no one really cares for 500 power defensively anymore. Uh, and this brainstorm effect 
can be really strong in combination with this level zero here like I said being able to manipulate your deck just enough to force your opponent to like for, basically force yourself to cancel like one to one to three times next turn just because you manipulate your deck so much is a really powerful uh, effect but I don't know if these two will be played together or even if this spammable brainstorm will really be played together um, it seems like the set uh, uses a lot of stock uh, especially if you're doing like something like D-mail or something like that so I'm not sure if uh, having extra stock to be able to use this spammable brainstorm will ever come up really uh, we have a 1-1, one, 5-5 one, uh, five, five against 2k power if you have two or more other lab member trade characters. So we have a 1-7-5 one, one, and hand on core. Uh, very solid standby target if you're going to look within blue, I guess. And also if the metaver gets to it, you know, um, people are running like cost, can't be versed by cost heroes is a solid card pick. Um, like I said, cards that have staying power that also cost resource are usually really powerful. Uh, because you don't want to waste a resource by having it only there for one turn. You want it there for multiple turns most uh, most of the time. And then, you know, 7-5 with all the cool counters the set has, uh, this thing's probably not going to die, really. So I could see this being used in the standby list. So something like red-blue, maybe splash green or something like that would be a really solid combination of cards. And then finally we have um, Climax Stitcher. So on play, discard a Climax from your hand. If you do, then you can salvage one lab member trait character to your hand. Um, this is always good, uh, especially if you have, um, uh, what's it called, uh, blue gates in your deck. I think this is always, or arch or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what people call it nowadays, pants, I guess. Um, just go at, um, this is like a must have at least one of in your deck. I think uh, this effect is very powerful and um, or even gold bars. If you play gold bars, this effect is very powerful because you can uh, trade up some uh, tempo from the climax you get into a card that you could use uh, to fill the board or set up combos and stuff like that. And then TD has a blank uh, pants, arch, blue gate, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't think it combos with anything that I'm aware of. Maybe they'll reveal something soon, but yeah. Here we have the 1-0 Crisk uh, Climax combo. It's 3-5, uh, gains 2k if you have two or more other lab member trait characters, so it's 1 0 five, 5 And then if you have the Climax, it's a uh, pay one, and this is in the front row, and you have five or less cards, you can make costs if you do. From your waiting room, put uh, up to two uh, cost zero or lower trait characters, or cost zero or lower characters onto the field wherever you like. Uh, pay one plus two is pretty good, but the demerit of having five or less cards in your hand is kind of annoying. Um, we have a one zero uh, six k oversighted card. The card in front of this is higher level than this card. This card can't attack, and when this card comes from hand to field for the turn, it gains plus one level and one thousand power. So it's a one zero seven k, or actually level two seven k. So at least the first turn you play it out, it'll it'll be level two, so I can fight other level twos if need be. Uh, seems like an okayish card. Uh, I don't know if it's really going to be played that much, but the fact that it gets a level uh, and 1,000 power, uh, so it can beat over like uh, level one uh, reverses or suiciders is pretty solid, I guess. And then once again, we have another gate here for this combo. So I guess you could end up running eight gates, which is I know a lot one thing that Japan loves and all that. So I'm not sure how good this combo is. It seems pretty mediocre at best. So, but well, only advantage here is that it does not require reverse, but you have to have five or less cards, which kind of sucks. Uh, plus two soul TD card, very cute Chris art. <laughs> That's about it. So we have this 2-2 two -two, uh, Okabe here. Seems actually, I think this is one of the more interesting Okabe uh, cards. So if you have two or more other characters, it gains 2k. So uh, it's a 2295 like most of the time. Then at climax combos with book, a blue book actually, if you have another lab, if this is in the front row and you have another uh, lab member trait character, uh, you can reveal the top two cards of your deck. Uh, if you have so uh, if you revealed one or more, uh, you can, and they're uh, lab member trait characters, uh, you can put it to stock in any order you like and then put the other cards into the waiting room. So this is an interesting stock uh, stock charging combo that I could see being played in like maybe standby. So sometimes when you play the book, this card becomes a, uh, you know, two zero or whatever, or two one for uh, nine five beater with two soul seems okay. 
Uh, but the fact that I could possibly cheat this out early uh, is very appealing to me. I don't think it'll really be like very a very powerful card because you have to cheat it out early, and then you got to wait one more. Then the next turn you get to start generating the stock. Uh, usually, uh, I think like effects like this, um, you kind of want to abuse it as soon as possible. So I'm, I don't know, just having to wait one turn to be able to start abusing this effect might feel bad but essentially you stand by this out cost zero and then you can generate like two stock a turn seem could be powerful uh for like super compression i guess um yeah i think outside of that like the timing for this too is like you want to do this on your first deck usually so if you have to hard play this from hand it, it probably feels really bad uh, this is another climax for the books here that they revealed as well. The, so this book combos with these two cards. Uh, when this card attacks, if this book exists um, in your climax zone, uh, and you have another lab member trait character, you may, it's just Maguro or whatever. Like a top four, add one to hand, discard the rest. Um, this effect here, I could see being played. Okay, so if you're playing, you could play standby book, which seems powerful in a way because you fill up your waiting room with card choices, and then um, it usually guarantees that your deck is going to be uh, refreshing before level two, causing it so your Ferris level threes can come out more consistently. But even about that, I don't know if this card is going to be good enough to be played. I'm sure a lot of people are going to play this just because they're so used to having this effect and it being like somewhat powerful but um 6k power with a climax just doesn't seem very appealing nowadays i feel like 6k is uh, very low on the bright side you don't have to reverse uh an opponent with this card so i'm i don't know i'm not sure where this is going to land on the, on choosing uh, on the choice of uh level one combos if you plan to play a level one combo um but it could be a very powerful card depending on the other early plays in the set. It seems like Ferris level 3 is the only early play that has the condition of 2OS climaxes if uh, I can remember. So in that case this card is can be powerful powerful in that package and I think that if that's the only package it's powerful in, um, I don't know if this card is going to be good, and good enough. But uh, my evaluation might be completely wrong uh, depending how strong, how people feel uh, Ferris, the Ferris early play is, like how powerful it feels. Because I guess uh, in common, I think in that deck you're you're looking to play blue and red as your main colors, I think. I want to say, I want to say you're looking to make, yeah, play blue and red because you want to play standby in this book to be able to get this combo off and generate, guarantee the Ferris early play. Um, yeah. It, uh, yeah, I guess it, it just really depends how much the Ferris level 3 builds tempo for you, making that card more appealing. I think outside of that, uh, it, this this effect is not very powerful. I think people are gravi gravitate way too much to being able to mill their deck through combos like this. I feel like main, deck or main phase deck manipulation is a million times stronger than uh, this Maguro effect on attack, but uh, we'll see what happens there. I feel like I kind of rambled on a little too long about this card effect, but yep. So this card was originally spoiled early on too. So this 3-2 Mayuri is a, is a lab member trait character support for cards in front of it. Game gives 2k to those characters. On play from hand, you can discard a card to heal a stock. So in reality, this is a 3-1 ditch one, heal one uh, type of uh, effect going on here, which I think is Pretty solid, especially if you're playing um, the Chris top end. Uh, the, obviously, you're not going to have any heals, so this is, you're probably going to cheat out this for heals. And the fact that it doesn't uh, eat up too much stock, but generates you a stock back, is uh, very powerful when you're trying to um, get enough stock to, you know, triple Chris. But like I said originally, this card has a problem. Like it it doesn't synergize very well with the Chris level three because I feel like you want to get that sweet spot of three uh, burning for three, not four. And this card uh, causes you to burn for four if you have it in the back row and then um, a field of level threes in the front row. The last effect is um, 
uh, act ability, you rest two lab member trade characters and swap a card in your uh, in your level zone with a card in your waiting room, and then you give a character plus one level. I don't know why they gave it this plus one level thing. I guess it's to uh, guarantee that you have a uh, level two becomes a level three or something for whatever reason. I'm not really sure what is up with this uh, plus one level stuff, but yep. And there's a second art for it. And then we have a 2-1 counter, it's 2-5 counter, but it has the secondary effect of pay to kill a character on your field, and then kill uh, one of your opponents uh, higher level than their current level. Uh... Oh wait, does this give till end of opponent's turn? Oh no, you have to give it to one of your own characters, dang. I was like, this, com this in combination with uh, this being to one of your opponent's characters until end of turn could have been like a really silly power play card combo, but I guess that's not, not going to happen. So uh, yeah, pay three, kill a character. Uh, this effect is really, really strong. It, it like Being able to manipulate your field during your opponent's attack phase is like one of the, I think one of the stronger effects in Weiss that you can do. So whenever a counter gets printed that says I can sack a character on the field if I use the counter, I think is very powerful. So you can set up scenarios where you force your opponent to swing into an empty lane now instead of having um, the character there to minus one soul. So in some cases this is like a plus one soul counter and, and also in other cases it's a dodge reverse effect counter uh, if you're level two or higher. And then having this card in your deck anyway uh, decentivizes uh, your opponent from early playing because if they think you have this in hand, uh, even though it costs you three stock, which uh, if you play the stock charge combo is not bad, <laughs> but um, if you, at the cost of three stock, being able to remove opponent's character uh, is like basically, or an early play character is basically like a heal too, and if they attack in the wrong order, they lose another stock themselves. It's just a very powerful effect that I think, um, I don't think it gets like undervalued, but it's just, it's a very powerful play that I think good players uh, when they have the opportunity to abuse this effect, they will go all the way and abuse it hard. Uh, that is it so far for the reviews. That's what I have out. Uh, this week on Friday is when the set releases. So um, I think this week's of card, I'm, I'll try to... Uh, I, I guess this week they're just going to reveal cards that have already been revealed, the sign cards and stuff. But anything new or special that comes out, I'll make a little short video on it. And then I'll probably have um, a video up of me opening up some boxes for Steins Gate because I'm really excited for this set and I think this set overall is going to be really powerful or maybe not super like powerful or anything but it's just going to be a really solid like uh, maybe low tier 1, high tier 2 deck in my opinion. Oh the train's coming also. So uh, that's my cue guys to let you guys go. So uh, see you guys in the next video. Later.